Hello everyone, Linda Israel. Thank you so much for watching and being here. If you would, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Today I have a little project for the June challenge that is inside the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. We're going to paint some book pages to make these big envelopes that you can use in your journals as an insert or you can send as a friend and if you don't want to paint them you can even do them with just plain book pages let's get started now I have a book that this is the da Vinci code and the pages are about oh a little over six inches by about nine and a quarter inches so it depends upon the book that you have or how big you want your little pocket envelope to be I plan to cut these down so I'm just using them as they are I'm gonna lay them out on my mixed media mat and I've got a couple of colors of some acrylic paint so I'm gonna put them out on a palette here all right my goal is to cover up the text that's on the book pages so I don't really care what's back there I'm gonna use an old uh, I think this is a hotel key card and go across my book pages applying paint now if you aren't a bright colored person meaning you don't really care for the bright colors that I like to use but you like my ideas use the colors of paint that you have you can use a just ivory acrylic paint and then you can coffee dye them or spray them with coffee or spray them with tattered angels glimmer mist i just wanted to paint mine today all right once you have them painted if you feel like you can still see too much of the text just kind of come back over it basically you don't want it so thick that you can see ridges or bumps of paint so smooth it out with your card just a little bit make sure you get the whole thing and then either allow it to dry or use a heat tool so I'm going to dry these or I may pick up another pair and clean up here in just a moment the book pages are dry if your book pages are thin you may want to back them with another book page so I'm going to do that real quick like and I'll just glue it down all the way around I'm using a lean's tacky glue and I'm just kind of going around the perimeter and then doing a zigzag down the middle putting some glue down and then I'll line these up as best as I can sometimes when you paint a page it shrinks a little bit all right I'm gonna repeat that on the other piece all right I'll turn it over and then look at it and sometimes like I said the painted page kind of shrinks up a little bit so I'll grab some scissors and trim off this excess a little bit you could also use your paper trimmer Next one I need to do is to trim these down to a narrower width to fit inside my journal because that's what my plan is. So if you don't need to fit this into a journal, you can leave it the size that it is. You may want to cut off this ragged edge. So I want to cut mine to be five and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to lay them one on top of the other so that they are the same size when I cut them and save this little strip i have a tutorial that shows you how to use up those strips the next thing i need to do is look at this and decide which one do i want to be my front cover of my pocket and i think i want this one my pocket i want it to be six and a half inches deep so i'm going to cut off i'll flip this page over and take this top piece and glue it to the inside of the back i'm going to be meticulous about putting glue on this bottom edge because I plan to fold my envelope and I want that to stay down you can also use junk mail for this process as well so don't think that you have to tear up a book you can use just about anything that you may have on hand now I see that this is lifting a little bit so I'm going to come in here and add a little bit more glue I really want that to be adhered down all right so the next thing I need to do is add some decoration to it so I'm going to apply some distress inks on this upper edge and down the side and bottoms and I do plan to trim this in a moment so I'm only just going to do this upper edge and then down the side 
grabbing a scrap of paper. I have the, I think it's called Bubbles, but I'll make sure in the description box what the name of this is. This is one of the stamps from Beeline Designs. And I've got Archival Ink Jet Black. And I will stamp this across the top and then repeat it. Set this aside. I want my outside flap to have the bubbles. So I'm just kind of finding that top and then stamping those on there. All right, I know that my flap is going to go on top of my page, but I want to make sure that I have it folding in the right spot. So I'm going to grab my paper cutter again. And I know that my pocket is six and a half inches on the front. So I'm going to come up just a smidge, not quite six and three quarters. So I have a little bit of a gap here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to use my scoring tool and gently, because it may be wet, you want to make sure that you're gentle if the glue is still wet. And I have a score line now. And I will use my ruler to kind of help fold that the first time, making sure that stays down, lining it up with my edges. And then I'll use my bone folder to press that out. And that's what I was afraid of. My glue wasn't quite dry yet. All right, so since my glue wasn't dry, I'll try to smooth that out as best I can. I'm gonna grab some washi tape here. I got a little bit left of this one. All right, it needs some glue on it. And I was just grabbing what was on my desk, so I'm gonna use some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Ink and go over it, which will help blend that color. Again, when I go to fold this, so I know that this is going to be my top edge, so I'll lay that on here. And I want to add a decoration that falls below my flap. So I'm just kind of temporarily laying those together. I've got some cheesecloth that I sprayed with Tattered Angels from the Under the Sea collection. And I just want a little piece of it, so I'm going to snip it. So I've got a little piece of that. And then I have a, some of this fuzzy yarn that was in my stash. And I thought, you know, I need to use it. So I'll get those two pieces. All right, so I'm looking at this. And I think what I want to do is kind of just make a little nest, if you will right here on the bottom, keeping it below my flap. And what I will do is I'm going over to the sewing machine now, zigzag stitch kind of around in a circle to help hold these fibers in place. So let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, so I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set up with a regular needle and I have relatively new thread. I do recommend if you're going to be sewing, that you use a new thread, not something that's been in your stash for 20 years, because you'll be frustrated with how many times the thread will break. I'm going to set up a zigzag stitch. Mine is a standard 3.5 by 1.4. It's a digital one. And we're going to sew across the top of this. I do recommend that if you're going to sew on paper, that you make sure that the glue is dry before you start sewing. So I'm just going to put down my presser foot on top of everything and then start stitching. While I'm here at the sewing machine, I will stitch across this top edge. That'll be the inside of the envelope top edge. All right, so now we have that piece sewn. Now I'm going to come back and grab my other piece and a paper clip. And what I will do is line this up, use my paper clip to hold it. And if it looks like it's not lining up perfectly, I may need to make some adjustments, but I think I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to kind of push up the cheesecloth out of the way, and then I will start stitching on the bottom edge here. And when I get to a corner, I will raise my presser foot and rotate it around, and then I continue stitching. I'll remove the paper clip so I don't sew over it. I'll go ahead and go past the top here, and I just remembered something that I didn't do, so I'm going to cut my thread and let's go back over here real fast. I forgot to snip off this upper area so I'm just going to come oh about a half an inch from the top there or from the fold the top of the fold and then just cut it at an angle and I'll grab this piece if you want it to match 
or you can just cut it and let it be whatever it is and I'll cut across this way so now what I'm going to do is continue sewing on this side and close this envelope up all right so I got that sewn and I'll just kind of fluff this back out a little bit this will go down like that and I have an image that I stamped earlier this is an octopus image from my under the sea collection and I thought it would be really cute I see a little piece of trash in here right in the middle of that making sure it's still below my flap so I'm going to take my glue and glue this down and I'll lay an acrylic block on top for a little bit to help smooth that out for the inside I made a little journal card out of one of my gel prints and I took a piece of transparency film and sewed across the top then placed it onto my card base and stitched around the bottom and the sides to make a pocket I decided I wanted a clear pocket so that when I put my library card this is a library card rubber stamp with the stamp take me to the ocean with the stamp the crab and some little tiny bubbles because I thought it looked really good with it peeking out of the card or the pocket all right so this should be somewhat dry it may need a little bit more glue on it so I'll just add a little bit more and then I have the word octopus it's part of a set of four little rubber stamps and I stamp it on a scrap of paper so let's put it right there I'll add some distress inks to the corners that we cut off these guys are going in the pocket they are four and a half inches by six inches tall and I thought that way you can put something in the pocket and be able to get it out because if it was smaller it would be lost down inside the envelope and then we'll fold this over and I just took a paper clip and a piece of fabric a piece of the cheesecloth and a couple little pieces of the fibers and laid them all together and stitched it down with a quick zigzag stitch and put that on top again I may put some weight on this in a moment and then here is another one that I made with the mermaid stamp and the mermaid word and I use the uh, lobster coral duo I did the same concept with the pocket just a different gel print and some different rubber stamps here adventure under the sea this is from the kale and seaweed quartet and then this is part of the fish trio or you could just use book pages without painting them now these are painted book pages that I layered behind a digital image and then I stamped a word and I had a little scrap of a trim that I put on there and of course this is a paper clip I didn't put a journal card in here but this one is a little bit smaller width wise because I cut off the blank areas that didn't have any text so there is a way to make some little envelopes that you could paper clip into your journal page or you could send as a gift you could actually glue this down and make another pocket behind the pocket if you like I hope you like this and you will join the challenge inside the friendly junk journal people Facebook group look for the link in the description box below those who enter all you got to do take a picture and share it to the event inside the group and you could be entered to win a $10 off coupon to my shop so you just need to join the group post a picture of your project hey if you do a tutorial video let us have that as well love to see how you came across making your own all right everybody thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this please again give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends of course if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and check the description box for the links to the group as well as any products that i use all right everybody thank you so much for watching bye